Hi there, I'm Joshua Farnsworth, and today my friend Will Myers is going to show you how to attach the top of a portable Moravian workbench to the undercarriage using a cool historical skill called blind pegging. Before Will jumps into showing you how to blind peg the workbench top, I want to let you know that you can get free plans for building the portable Moravian workbench at the link below. They were the plans drawn up by Will. Also, this tutorial that Will is going to share is part of a seven hour video that Will and I made called Building the Portable Moravian Workbench with Will Myers, which we filmed together in Roy Underhill's Woodwright School in North Carolina. You can buy the video in digital format or DVD at woodandshop.com forward slash store. All right, take it away, Will. Okay, with our top on, we're, we're ready to install our, our dowels that will line it up. And there's several things we need to do before we start that process. And we're going to locate the dowels by a process called blind pegging. It's real simple. But, uh, but first, we need to be sure and locate where our legs are meeting the top. And if you'll notice, we're, we've got the overhang on either end centered so that we've got the same on both ends. And uh, located these. And I've also left a little bit of an overhang. We've got these tenons we haven't planed off yet. But, uh, of about a sixteenth or so, and that's for uh, this top is not 100% dry and could contract a little bit, so uh, we can plane that on flush to the legs later and, and go ahead and use it now, even though the top's not completely dry. Same thing down here. You see my two line-up marks, and I'm overhanging a little bit. On the back, I've made a couple of marks you can't see, just and uh, to, to use this lineup as a guide also. So now, just flip it out of the way. And blind, this is a process, like I said, called blind pegging. And very simple. Um, we put the nail where we want our, our lineup dowel to be. I, you don't want to put it right at the end. I usually because the front ones have the most uh, pressure on them. But you can come just anywhere. I'm going to put this one about right here. No measurement, just like I said, you don't want it right on the end. And then here's, I made a mark where the back of our top meets the stretcher. So we know this is the very back. We're going to put a second one about right here. And if you'll notice, I've put these a little bit this way. Uh, this stretcher, of course, is angled, and when we drill in, that keep our dial kind of centered in that angle, angled stretcher. No big deal, but it's something I usually do. Same thing down here. And these, like I said, don't don't have to be in exactly the location, same locations between either end. So. Okay, now what we want to do, and you noticed I, I didn't drive those in far. We've got to be able to pull them out with our, this is a pair of wire cutters, diagonal cutters. So we need to be able to, you don't want to drive them way down in there, but then again, you don't want to drive them to the just a, a smidge and they, you know, push over or something at the wrong moment. So you cut them off uh, about three sixteenths or so above the stretcher. The main thing is to, to leave enough to get a hold of with your wire cutters to get those, get those out. Okay, what these four little nails are going to do for us when we flip this top back over and line up our lines, um, we'll make little uh, little holes, you know, in exactly the location 
of a little hole the nail made down here so then we we have a place to to put our auger and we know we know our dowels will line up I put a couple little uh, these are just a couple of scraps down that are taller than the nails and what we're going to do is set the top down on them and get it in position and then pull them out and let it set down on the nails. One thing uh, I forgot to mention, be sure your wedges are drove, uh, driven in good and tight. You don't want the top of the bench to, to push in while you're doing this. Have your dowel, your dowels in the wrong locations. Okay, we've got our little bit of overhang there. Our marks pretty well line up. So now, we're just going to carefully pull our little scrap out and set it down on the nails. Make sure we got a little bit of overhang there. Same thing on this end. Okay. And what I usually do, you can take your mallet and hit straight down the top, but I, I usually hit up, just uh, give the bottom of the top stretcher a couple good taps and you'll see the top move down on those, those pegs, or on the uh, nails rather. So now just pick it back up. And you can see here is our where our nails contacted the the top. So now we know exactly when we bore our dowel holes in these locations, they will align perfectly. And that's called blind pegging. It's pretty useful for some things. It uh, really works good here. It's the best way I know of to line them up. So after that, of course, just take your, your, your cutters and just pull the little nails out. And now you're ready to drill the dowel holes. Okay, we've got uh, our holes drilled using our nail locations on this side and just kind of show you what we're doing here. This is the, the where the dowel will go in the front of the bench, this, this location here. And if you'll look, this hole is elongated. Okay, the dowel, we do that, this top, like I said earlier, is not 100% dry and it's, it could shrink a little bit. But even if it was dry, you know, it's going to expand and contract with seasonal changes. So. What this does, it allows this back dowel to move back and forth, or the top to move back and forth on the dowel rather, and uh, not cause any problems. And the walls are still straight, so any pressure when you're uh, using a, you know, doing heavy work with a mallet or, or something like that, it still keeps the tops of the legs from coming in with pressure. So but you've got a slot and it can move front to back. So we're gonna, on this side, uh, we've got one more hole to drill. And I try to drill all these pretty close to the same depth. Um, with this particular auger, about 20 turns. So once the cutters touch, so we'll get down there and then we're gonna count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And that'll give us a <clears throat> about an inch or so deep hole. Okay. okay, and our dowels will go here. I was going to show you on this back one how we make that slot. 
and it's uh, very simple. I, I start with a square and our, our nail hole that we made a minute ago. Just put the square right through the center of it and make you a line. <clears throat> and I'm also going to switch. This is an Irwin bit, and um, this the reason I'm switching bits, this one drills or bores a hole right at 5 eighths. This is a 5 eighths bit also, but it drills a slightly bigger 5 eighths hole, so it doesn't grab on our dowels. The dowels will slide into this hole, and then when we drive them in and glue them in this one, it, it's a real tight fit, which is what we want, so it makes it a little easier to get the top off the bench. So I'm gonna change the auger real quick. And just start, uh, just, well, you know, uh, that's what, quarter or so. And make sure you stay pretty close to on the line. And bore on down. And this one is about 20 turns also, I think. So that's what we're going to do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then go back over this way. Let the let them overlap just a little. And bore down again. 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 19, 20, 21, just, just to be sure. Okay, after you bore your holes, just uh, this little triangle piece of waste that's left, just pair it off straight to the outermost part of the circle, the auger hole. That's pretty much it. We're ready to go ahead and cut our dowels, glue them in, and then we'll have our top mounted and ready to move on to the other things. Okay, for the pegs, I use uh, just 5 8 oak dowel. Uh, just this is some that I bought. That you can you can make them if you want to. But uh, they simply, these, these are cut about an inch and seven eighths or so. Just a little drop of glue. These fit pretty, pretty tight. So a little drop of glue in the holes just to be sure they don't pull out. And just take our hammer and down it goes. Okay, so that to make it easier when we flip the the top over, there's two. You need to make a little bit of a point on this thing, and uh, you can use a chisel, and uh, which works good. But uh, what works better is this little tool here, a little cone cutter, uh, Roy. One day in class, we were chiseling with a chisel and taking forever, and he's like, I've got the thing for that. So uh, he let me have one, but it's a little cone cutter, and what it does, a little pencil sharpener. It just makes a nice little cone, which helps you when you flip this top over to line up with your holes. Slick little, little thing. Works real well. So now 
let's give it a try. See if this will come anywhere near fit. to do to make it any better. Hi, I'm Joshua Farnsworth. If you like this video, I've got a whole bunch of other free woodworking videos and articles at my website, which you can visit by clicking right here. You'll go to woodandshop.com. Down here, if you click, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And over here are some uh, really great other videos that I think you might like to check out.